Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, Tea Sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. And I have my co-host, Emily, in the house. Emily, Emily, say what's up to the people. Hey, everybody. What's up, people? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot to get into today. Um, so me and you have been kind of talking about this whole interview off and on all weekend. And I talked mm-hmm. about it on my last live stream because Armand did release the full interview of his interview with um, Sukiana. Mm-hmm. And it was very interesting, to say the least. And, you know, for me, like I always say, there's room for all types of women, right? You know, right. everybody's not conservative and prude. You have people who are out there wild and free and, and casual and stuff like that. But I thought that the interview, I thought, one, Armand did a good job. I thought he hit on yeah. a lot of really good questions and she was very open, but I mm-hmm. also felt like she is not only playing a character, but she's not as proud of what she does as she tries to proclaim. Yeah. I got that too. Mm-hmm. She really, um, it seems like, and, and like I said before in our conversations, it could be maybe just maybe seeing a little bit of, of myself and like going off of my own feelings, but it really seems like, she's really not about that life. Like she portrays herself to be like, I think that the things that she does, I think it messes with her. Mm -hmm. Like she really wants to, there's people that are built for stuff like that. And then there's people who just aren't. And I don't know. I mean, I know she's making money and she's doing her thing. So I really like Suki. I like her personality. I like how she was very vulnerable and open But um, yet to be in like the sex worker industry, you it takes a certain type of person and it's not a bad person or anything like that. It just there's certain people that are built for it and there's certain people that aren't. And with my experience, if you're very spiritually sensitive, it's going to fuck with you hard. Mm hmm. Exactly, because you used to be a stripper, and I know we've talked Mm -hmm. about this in the past. And, you know, I've had a lot of homegirls who were strippers and you know, they eventually get out of it, but it is, it, you know, it does take a toll on you, you know, dealing with the men and the different personalities and the lack of respect, you know, Mm -hmm. that sometimes you have to deal with in that industry. But I guess for me, you know, when you're about something and it doesn't bother you, you don't get so defensive. And that's exactly, I I was getting a lot of that from in her interview where she was getting defensive and cussing. And, you know, my thing is when you're proud of what you're doing, then you don't have to knock other people. So for instance, she would say, um, I don't care if I'm fucking on OnlyFans. I'm only fucking my man. A lot of you hoes are fucking, you know, several men um, in a year. Yeah, you know, every time you have sex, it's with a different man. Okay, but if we're all supposed to be so sexually free and, you know, be about that life, why do you care if these girls are having sex with multiple men? It's almost like even though she's doing gutter ball shit on OnlyFans for a check, she still wants to put herself as being better than women who sleep with multiple partners. And I didn't get that because if you're supposed to be about that life and anything goes, then why do you care if these women are sleeping with multiple men? And how's that worse than you sleeping with one man, but making it for the public? Yeah. And I also, um, to, to piggyback off of what you're saying, I noticed that she kept um, bringing up, okay, it was with one person. It was with my fiance. You know, like it's almost like, you know, this whole hoe culture, but I really ain't a hoe like that because it's only just with my fiance or it's with my man. And then like you said, but y'all fucking all kind of people for free. At least I'm getting paid and it's with one person. Like she was trying to, like, who are you trying to convince? You're trying to convince us or yourself. Exactly. And, you know, I also noticed she kept bringing up God and that she's very spiritual And we've all seen that viral video of hers, you know, years ago before the OnlyFans and all that stuff where she was crying about, you know, selling her soul and how she didn't want Mm -hmm. to sell her soul to the industry and things like that. And, you know, like I've always said, you know, a lot of these celebs love to talk about God or bring up God. But you have to ask yourself, what God are they talking about? 
right. are they talking about a Christian God, a Hindu God, you know? And I think in Suki's case, I do understand in certain aspects, she feels like she's religious. And, you know, like she said, if God can forgive me, how come, you know, why wouldn't I forgive YK, um, YK a weirdo? Um, <laughs> you know, and I definitely get that. But I also believe that her God is money. I believe yeah, yeah. that money moves her. And once your God becomes money and your whole thing is I can do this and the ends justifies the means, it's cute for now. But four, five, six years from now, will you be able to sleep at night? Because again, like I always say, our money's not good money. And there was even a question that our mom was asking her, how do you feel when your kids will see this in a few years, you know, because your kids will be able to, and maybe they're old enough to Google now. I don't know how old her kids are. And her whole response is, you know, I'm, it don't matter if my kids see me on OnlyFans sucking dick, all y'all's mama done suck dick. All y'all <laughs> done did this and that. And it's like, yes, everybody, okay? We've all sucked some dick. <laughs> but the difference is, ma'am, we're not all on the internet doing it. So you can't yeah. compare what people do behind closed doors to their boyfriends, their fiancés, their homeboys, their husbands, to what you're doing. Two totally different things. Yeah, and, um, you know, I understand, like, going hard because, you know, you got kids and things. I heard a quote one time. I'm probably going to butcher it. But it was like, you don't want to be carrying so many bags. You can't tell between, uh, man, I'm going to butcher it. But it was like, you can't tell between the difference between a bag or a trash bag. The way they sounded it, said it sounded way cooler. But like you said, not all money is good money. And, and like I said before, you know, growing up poor sucks. Like I'm, a lot of people have experienced it. It's, it. it's hard. You know, you look back on it, there's trials and tribulations. But sometimes what you have to do like sacrificing your morals or your integrity or going through uh, other ways to make money. Sometimes that can be more um, traumatizing on your kids than just growing up poor. Like just mm -hmm. because kids are living in a household where they have a lot of money and they have everything they could want for, um, are they, you know, their college is paid off and things like that. That's all good and well, but there's other things that can traumatize your kids outside of just growing up poor. There's a lot of people who grow up poor and they still end up, you know, living happy, healthy lives. So um, I get, yeah. you know, going hard for your kids, but that was definitely something that made my ears perk up. Cause it seemed like a lot of times she was bringing up her kids. She's like, I love being a mother. I love taking care of my kids. I'm home all the time with them. And um, you know, that, that was one thing I thought of. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good point is that so many times we demonize poverty and granted, you know, we like me and you, we both grew up poor. We didn't have a mm -hmm. whole lot growing up. And that's one of the things that we've been able to relate to and to watch how much we grinded to get up out of poverty is a blessing. But even, you know, growing up in poverty, growing up poor, not having everything that you think that you need or even things that you want it's not always necessarily bad because even growing up in those circumstances, they make you stronger. Yeah. You know? They build you, they build yeah. you like, especially when you get older and you start like going through like real trials and tribulations and stuff. And you're like, Oh shit, this ain't nothing. Like if I can make it through the shit that I made through, uh, made it through before this little bullshit here ain't nothing. Exactly. And that's the thing, like you said, so many times, you know, we grind and we go hard, you know, to make sure our kids live better than how we lived and to get money. But again, just because you have it now, just because you're rich does not mean that those kids are necessarily better off. You know, and if you have to do strange things for some change to take care of your kids and your kids can Google you on the Internet and see you in all types of compromising, you know, positions how good is that going to be for their mental health as opposed to them maybe growing up in some form of poverty? Yeah. And you know, this, I will say I do. I, I like Suki. I like her personality. I wish she would take more of a comedy route. Cause I think she's funny as hell. Like mm -hmm. a lot of little things I've seen to her. Cause you know, I'm short. So when she, me and her are the same height and she's like, I'm a little leprechaun and I want some gold. Like she's funny as shit. I think the comedic route works really well for her. I understand, you know, she makes her money how she makes her money. Um, but I do, there, there was a lot of things throughout the interview that I did like as well. I liked how she was very open about being very sensitive and about mm -hmm. having emotions and things like that, because I'm the same way. I'm very sensitive. My feelings can get hurt pretty easy. You know, I, my, I might not give a fuck tomorrow, but today my feelings <laughs> can get, <laughs> um, I, you know, I get my feelings hurt pretty easy too. So I did like how she was very open about that. 
And, you know, when things were not going, you know, when things were kind of fucked up, she was very open. Like, that hurt my feelings. So I thought it was nice that she brought that up. And I really do like her personality, but I think she's conflicted. I think that, you know, she wants the money and she, I don't think she really wants to be doing all this. I know she quit OnlyFans. I guess she quit making content, but she still has content up, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that works. If you really officially quit, maybe you're not making new shit, but you still got old stuff you're making money off of, whatever. I don't think, and you know, I could be jumping out the window because I'm not her. I don't think she really likes doing all the OnlyFans type shit. Just off the energy, <clears throat> excuse me, off the energy from the um, interview, it, it didn't seem like it set well with her, but you know. Yeah, I she's kind of doing it as a, as a way to justify, you know, <clears throat> the ends justifying the means. But yeah, I don't think that she's necessarily happy with that. I think she's a lot smarter and a lot more articulate. And she understands what she's doing, but she feels like she has no other choice. Like, you know, when she tried to just be regular Suki, nobody was paying her any mind. But when she became ratchet and was doing all this stuff for attention, here comes the attention. Now, currently, she's going viral because she's out there in London acting a fool. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bunch of, like, white folks out there in front of, I think, Buckingham Palace. And she's talking about getting her coochie scratched. And she wants to eat, you know, a dude's ass. So we're going to go ahead and play this clip really quick. Because Suki, you know she has no shame, child. <laughs> Let me go ahead and pull this up here. I'm trying to get my coochie scratched. I'm trying to get my coochie scratched and eat a nigga ass. Eat a nigga ass. We be eating niggas ass today in London. Period. <laughs> All right. So you just okay. saw that video. <laughs> And again, you know, a lot of people are dragging her. She's currently trending right now all over Twitter over that. Yeah, she'll video. go viral. That's one thing, one thing Suki will do. She will trend and she will go viral. Yes, she will. <clears throat> and a lot of people are upset because they feel like that's a poor representation, you know, for black women overseas. You're over there hooping and hollering about eating ass. You know, it's just like you're doing too much, sis. And, you know, it's just like, I, I think that, you know, I get wanting to go viral. I get trying to, you know, cash in on your persona. But I also believe that there's a time and place for everything. Yeah. You know, if you're in concert and that's what you want to do for people who paid for a ticket to come see your show, then by all means, get on stage and, you know, eat somebody's ass or whatever y'all feel like doing at <laughs> concert. But I think there is a way that you carry yourself out in public. And I don't think it's so much about... Oh, being embarrassed or walking on eggshells because white people are there. I don't care if it's white people, brown people. It's just the way that you carry yourself in public because everybody doesn't know who she is. And so if I don't know who she is, black or white, and I'm seeing some random lunatic screaming about eating ass <laughs> and getting her coochie scratch, I'm thinking she might have an STD that she needs to get cured. Like what, you know, if I didn't know she was Suki, what is wrong with this random woman screaming about getting her coochie scratch and eating ass. I'm going to think you're crazy. Yeah. You know, um, I know that right now it's really popular, like this really super duper raunchy culture, you know, to be like very sexual and nasty and stuff like that. And I've watched a lot of her interviews and I'm like, okay, th there's no way people can think she's being serious. Cause I've, I've watched interviews where she's like, I love to bend over and fart in someone's face. And I'm like, she's trolling right now. Like, there's no way she's fucking serious in that regard. So I think, I don't know if she's just trolling um, in this instance. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely a way you should you should carry yourself in public. I do agree with that. But I will say for Suki, sometimes there's so many different types of people. And I get like representation and stuff like that. I don't think that all of the weight should be on her back, though. On like how, you know, women are being represented. If she's out there acting ratchet. That's Suki being ratchet. That don't represent you. That don't represent my other homegirls and how they act out in public. That's Suki shit right there. Right. And, you know, ordinarily, that that's how it should be, right? But unfortunately, yeah. for, like, us in the Black community, for whatever reason, we get painted with a monolithic brush, right? Yeah, that's and You can right. have, like, the white girl who's super ratchet and, you know, licking on a toilet seat and doing all types <laughs> yeah. of crazy stuff to go viral, Nobody says, look at how all white women behave. Yeah, but the bad babies of the world. Exactly. That's all white women. 
Exactly. Nobody ever says all white women act like bad baby or all white women act like Kim Kardashian because y'all have so much different representation. Unfortunately yeah. for us, we don't have a wide variety of representation that goes viral, right? It's like, for whatever reason, the main people who go viral in our community on social media tend to be the more brash, loud, ratchet, you know what I'm saying? Those type of personalities. And yeah. again, a lot of these women are playing personas, right? Because I've met a lot of these women like Krishan and, and so many others, and they're not like that in real life. So a lot of it is for social media. And I think that's the part that kind of, you know, is kind of sad to me that unfortunately sometimes as black women, you know, in order for us to go viral, to get that attention, to get our music heard, we have to play up this ratchet persona where we're fighting and we're on, you know, the bad girls club and baddies and all this and that. And we don't go viral for just being smart and articulate and carrying ourselves a certain way. And that's why I also hold a lot of the media, you know, especially black media responsible, that there should be a balance. You know what I'm saying? The same way we can post Suki and Krishan, we have to be able to post good news too and post, you know, regular black women just doing regular black things and handling their business. And I try to do that on my Instagram page, you know, just like we can post Suki, we also post good news, you know, like the little young boy who got the drum set from his teacher. I was in real oh. tears, by the way, oh, seeing yeah. that. That was so yeah. sweet. I cried about that. You know, I, I, we try and post a little bit of everything um, because again, black women are not a monolith. You know, no women are a monolith. You know, there's different types of women in every community, but unfortunately in our community, it's always like the Sukis, the sexies, you know, the most ratchet, the most vulgar that get that attention. And I know that that's yep. why does it because she gets attention for that. Like I said, right now she's trending. And unfortunately, most of the comments are typical black women. This is 95% yeah. of black women. This is how black women act overseas. This is embarrassing. It's like, no, this is how Suki acts overseas. I don't behave that way. Lady J literally lives overseas. She doesn't behave that way. You know, like don't paint us as a monolith, you know? Yeah, exactly. I, I agree. Because that's really not fair at all, which I mean, I get life isn't fair, but that's that's so unfair because usually, honestly, when most people like say Kim Kardashian's a white, most white girls be like, Kim Kardashian ain't white. She's Armenian, you know, like, but in the, the grand scheme of things, you're you're right. Most of the time they that's what the blogs carry. And that's what, and then, like you said, the comments are all, oh, see, this is how people act and this, this and the third. And then they use that as an excuse to spread ignorance and biases and, and just stupid shit. Like it's almost like a stupid narrative just by posting things like that. So, you know, I, I definitely get it from that perspective <clears throat> too, because like you said, they're, they only are going to highlight the, the ratchet stuff. And that's why people act like that. Because at the end of the day, you know, the more you go viral, the, I mean, that's the more money you make. I'm sure if Suki, you know, did a black China, and went, you know, super Christian and stuff like that, she would not make the same amount of money nor get the same amount of attention. No, you know, and again, that's part of the world that we live in. And so like, I get these women, they're trying to make their money. They're trying to feed their kids. They're trying to take care of their families, but it's just kind of sad that they have to do the most low brow things to go viral, to get a check, you know, whereas people in other communities, yeah, you may have a few that are ratchet, but they're not the, the main that's not the norm you know like whoa well, vicky before she turned christian she was not the norm bad baby's not the norm and unfortunately it's like all i see are people going viral you know for portraying and acting the, for portraying and treating themselves in the way that suki portrays and treats herself so yeah, and with, mm -hmm. with with suki also you know like whoa well, vicky for an example she has the option of switching things around and changing her image and all that, you know, Suki's not going to get those same graces that well, Vicky is going to get not saying that I agree that's fair, but w we know how the world is. If one day Suki wakes up and she decides she wants to, you know, switch it up, it's not going to be as easy for her as it was for a well, Vicky or for a bad baby or for whatever, you know, other, other girl just wakes up and decides, you know what, this is too much. I don't want to do this anymore. Exactly. You know, because they can always, switch it up and, you know, be given grace. And even like with white boys, you know, oh, boys will be boys. Mm -hmm. You know, now that was just a know. phase. Yeah, that was a phase. Justin and Bieber. Like, exactly. We don't get that same treatment. 
So, you know, as black women and of people of color, we do have to watch the way that we portray our image because we don't get that same grace. So you're, you're definitely right about that. You know, well, Vic, Vicky was out here wilding a few years ago and now she's super conservative and she switched up her whole style and she's still able to get, you know, sponsorship deals and, you know, all types of love. Whereas a lot of us, when we, per, you know, when we put ourselves out there is ratchet and I don't care, you can, you know, stick it in every orifice, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like we will always be labeled a whore and a porn star and this, this and that. So, yeah, it's, yep. it's crazy. But now we can go ahead and kind of segue to um, what's very interesting, because we were saying this earlier about this whole super ratchet, overtly sexual culture that's just going around. Um, if you guys do not know right now, Houston, we have a problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Houston, Texas has announced that they have a huge uptick, um, 128% spike in the STD syphilis. Okay. Yes. 128%. So I want to go ahead and read this real quick. They're saying that Houston health officials are warning residents of a syphilis outbreak that is responsible for 128% increase in amongst women. The Houston Health Department said it has also led to nine-fold rise in syphilis in Houston and in Harris County. Statistics indicate that new infections rose by 57% from 1800 in 2019 to 2900 in 2022. The number of cases amongst women totaled 649 last year, which is up from 295 in 2019. So this is really frightening. So we had posted this and I had wrote this comment. I said, see all that my coochie pink and my booty hole brown is coming <laughs> back to bite. People need to stop smashing everything that moves in these streets. Yeah. And the thing with syphilis too, is that like, you know, not, not saying any better, you know, STD shaming or anything, but syphilis can really like, it's not just like chlamydia where you go get some antibiotic. That's what killed John Gotti. Right. Or no, it wasn't John. Go it was uh, another John monster, Gotti. Al Capone. Yeah, Al Capone. It was what mm -hmm. killed Al Capone because he he was scared of needles. But syphilis will literally like it, it'll make you go crazy and you can die mm -hmm. from it. You know, that's a very serious STD. It is. And the thing that's so crazy is one of my tea sippers was telling me um, in the comment of that uh, post, she was saying that she believed that the reason why the syphilis outbreak was on the rise is that back in April, they had a thing out there called Mocha Fest, which was supposed to be like the new, um, what is that? The ATL thing that they had. Freaknik? Back in the day. Freaknik, yes. Thank you. It was supposed to be like the new Freaknik. And she was like, T, please hashtag Mocha Fest and go through the hashtag. Because I never heard of it. I haven't so either. I go on to Twitter and I'm literally hashtagging Mocha Fest. And when I tell you, I am shocked by what I'm seeing. This is what took place. I'm going to show you the video. This is what took place back in April. Okay. Oh, As wow. you see, <gasps> they are at a random pool party. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Ah! I'm going to mute it. And they are literally sucking this man's peen. There's multiple women standing in line to suck some random man's peen at a pool party in oh, front wow. of hundreds of people. <gasps> this is insane. Oh, wow. That is bad. Oh, yeah. my God. They're not even wiping it off. I don't even know if these Ooh. girls know each other. So now on top of that, they were random girls eating each other ah! Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn. This is straight porn all over Twitter. Yeah, that's what, man, Twitter's off the damn chain. They will just... They have I mean, no guidelines. A party in front of thousands of people. Oh my so God. People are saying that they believe that this is what caused the rise of syphilis in Houston. Hell, I imagine so. Shit. That's you wild. You can just see everybody's faces are just shocked in the crowd. Yeah. Could you imagine thinking you're going to a festival to listen to some music and have a good old funky time? <clears throat> and then you all this shit starts breaking out? Yeah. So it's just, it's crazy. And I think, again, it goes back to this whole anything goes culture, you know, like just, just wilding out, being freaky, you know, my booty holes brown. You want to see what it looks like. <laughs> I mean, it's just insane. And people act like STDs are something from the 90s. 
No, STDs are still around. You can still get HIV. You can still get chlamydia. You can still get gonorrhea. And, you know, people need to protect themselves. And, you know, it's okay to not sleep with any and everything that moves. It's okay to not give a random guy head at a pool party with your homegirl. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.